How are you guys? Hi. Vinny, what are you doing here? Oh my god, thanks for having me. I'm on autofocus. No, 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 sir. No, I went to a different channel. You're too highbrow for us. No. You're main channel only. Your, your main just, channel? I'm just on autofocus. Yeah, you're not allowed to be on autofocus. Dude, Canyon Day with the boys couldn't resist. Ah, what's up, guys? Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode. So many episodes. Almost 200 episodes now. No way. Yeah. Wow. Of Hoonigan Autofocus. Today we're featuring. Not this. Not this. No, not, this. not this. I wanted to. I want to. I want to briefly talk about this, but we're actually featuring my really good friend. I recently somebody asked me. How many good friends do you have? I got a lot of good friends, okay? I, I've been shooting for like almost 16 years now. I've met so many people in the industry. We got my really good friend here, Alex Bernstein, aka Bernou. Hello. Hi. Hi. And you built this awesome time oh, attack. Not <laughs> this awesome. I spent all of my time building this. Yeah, yeah. So, wait, you guys are basically brothers, right? You guys are basically yeah. matching in. Don't match. In every single way. You also have a white BMW. White BMW! But it's not this. You also have a, a E... What is it? E92. <laughs> 92. Yeah. E92. Is it manual too? Yeah. And manual and white. Yeah. Oh my god. It's actually yeah. the exact same yeah, spec. Problem. So this is like a stripper package car. I'm in love with a stripper. So it's six speed, no nav, no EDC, carbon roof. Pretty rare. He got, <laughs> he found the exact same car. Hello, we're twins. Like, not just the same color, exact same spec. Wait, yeah. a stripper package? Yeah, it's a stripper package, <laughs> yeah. dude. You want another really lame lingo is, uh, it's called a single hump. <laughs> what, why? Because... Well, so basically, if you look from here, you have the dash, there's one hump for the gauges, uh -huh. and then a double hump would be the ones that have nav. So single hump is super rare and desirable. Oh, I like that. Like, yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. And that is a really stupid name for it. Single hump. But I also wait a minute because there's a hump in the hood, so it's technically a triple hump so or a dual hump. That that's kind of the nice thing about this model. It's because it because it doesn't have a nav. It's in in a way it's timeless. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because the nav is the first thing that gets super outdated. So it's cool to kind of like go back to all the analog stuff. Because like, who uses nav in their car? You're gonna really like, beep boop 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 by the time you put your address in, like, get yeah. out of here. I'll be honest, I'm not that big of a BMW guy. Disappointed! But I do have to say, my favorite BMW is without a doubt the E92 M3. Part of it is because I had a chance to shoot the race car version. And that thing sounds so good. Yeah. I mean, the E92, I think, I was always kind of against because it's a really like a bloated car. It's a bit heavier than you really want it to be, but the S65 is just such an awesome engine. I mean, it's like a V8 with ITVs that revs to almost 9,000 RPM stock. Like, that just doesn't exist anymore in a production car that like we could afford. So, it's awesome. This is a car that actually, hi Lewis, that Lewis had a chance to shoot um, while you're competing at Global Time Attack? Yeah, I've some GTA events, and Beamer Challenge, like Time Attack stuff. I don't even know which well, one. Well, you might was. have actually seen this car a long time ago, because yeah. Alex has been on Hoonigan Channel a ton of times. He had a Supercharged E46 M3 that then got Turbo E46 M3. Ruined Then it. he got like yeah. a real practical, normal 335 sedan. Yeah, ruined that. that. Nice. Ruined that. And then we yeah. converted all of the parts from the 335 onto this car. Yeah. Hmm. So, and this used to be a narrow body, like 135i. So there's like no room for any tires, but the motor's awesome. It's an N54, it's a three liter twin turbo, and it has like so much potential. So wait, that's so where I started. It, from the outside, you basically turn it into a 1M in a yeah. way, right? I wanted to, I mean, I started going down that path, like not with the intention of doing, because people call them 1M clones. I didn't, I didn't buy the car to make it look like a 1M, but I ended up doing that because there are no other good options to make it wide. And I'm like a big fan of like factory kind of spec cars, like GT3 RS or like factory pace cars. So I did the wide body on the front so I could fit more tire because the car is like pretty heavy. I need more grip. And then every time I look back at it, I was like, oh, those narrow rear fenders. So, okay. So slow. before we go on further, this is a weird shoot for me. And you know why, Vinny? Why? This is a weird shoot for me because uh, I'm not the only photographer here out of this trio. I know, Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lewis. <laughs> so, uh, Alex, actually, you're a very, very well-established automotive photographer. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm and, not weird about it, though. No, no, I, I like that. I, I, I love your work so much, and yeah, but... I've been so lucky to be able to shoot with you uh, at events like Pikes Peak, but also you like to wheel, you like to drive, and you like to build cool cars. So we're basically brothers. Basically. <laughs> brothers from another mother. So let's let's check out your car. 2009 135i. And it was also a stripper package. Six speed, no nav, no nothing, black headliner, single owner car. It was like mint and perfect. And then uh, I think I was like three days later and I had the entire car apart, subframe out, and then we went to go race GTA together for our well, first time. What part did you swap over from your Three series, what's that like? Nothing. Just the suspension. And the nothing else fits. No. <laughs> Wait, the suspension actually fits? The suspension fits. So like basically this is the same chassis, this is the same chassis, 335i, same chassis. It's all like E9X chassis basically. So you can take the steering rack from the M3 and put it in here. You can take the rear subframe from the M3, put it in here. And the 1M, which is basically like a paper napkin idea from BMW M division in Germany, they basically were like, okay. This is the cooler car. This is the lighter car. This car's a handful. Let's take all of the M suspension parts and geometry, stuff it in that chassis. So that's what the 1M was. And yeah, I mean, this car is just a ton of fun. They're just so light, so nimble, uh, comparatively. Plus and, it looks yeah. awesome. I mean, when you were following us up here, I kept looking back and I'm like, oh, that looks so good. Yeah, the, the lights. The front end is so aggressive. It, the but, front... if it, but if you've ever seen a stock 135i, oh, it's a car that makes you feel nothing. Yeah. Well, and but like... that's, that's kind of the fun thing. That's the thing I really like about the M3s and M4s. They have like the pedestrian version, mm. right? It's kind of like with Nissan and their GTRs, right. right? You can get a Nissan Skyline and that's the pedestrian version of that car and it's uh, for daily driving and you can carry all your groceries, all of that. But of course they have the GTR version, just kind of like with BMWs, you have the M version yep. and even the top level is the actual GTR version, yeah. right? But so. I, think, I think it's funny, the one series is like a car that a lot of people never thought twice of because it was sort of like, was really soft looking. Yep. Like, Everyone would joke and be like, oh, it's your like daughter's graduation yeah, present. That's, that's the you know? He's like, you see it with a bow in the driveway after graduation. But like BMW actually did something cool. They took this twin turbo six cylinder E90 platform, big four door bloated car. And was like, we're just going to take this big old motor, same drivetrain, just stuff it in a lighter car, which is actually like really awesome when yeah. you think about it. And it's the coolest motor and they're so cheap and not that fun to work on, but I mean, there are people, there's a uh, Marco, he had like a crazy 1M clone with a S65 VH Stroker in it. And that's a really like sick build, but the N54 is gonna be faster all day. Like this car makes so much power. You pass GT3s and like supercars all day. I think track, people are gonna replace, start replacing 2Js with N54 soon. You could get these motors for like 1500 bucks. Yep. You could convert them to port style injection and they could make like 900 horsepower stock block. Oh my god, that's not bad. Crazy. That just went way over my head. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, for example, yeah, this this started life as a stock N54 motor. It comes with two tiny turbos, which are like really capable, but they make a ton of heat. It sucks for racing. I pulled those off, put a Garrett GT30X uh, 3076 R on it. It makes fun. Yeah, let's let's wheels. check it out. But I want to talk about the exterior first yeah. because you really massage this body. Like the point of this car is because it's wider but it's still subtle enough to be a street car yeah so tell me what you changed here so basically yeah we did the entire front end uh it's a side on hood carbon all right let's look that's at all this painted oh wow you actually got a carbon hood and you painted it yeah I that's like that's good race car stuff like the yeah. anti-rice i don't want any of that i didn't want to expose carbon uh but i love this hood i like that it's like the m3 style and then you really have to like evacuate heat so this is a big vent uh, we put there right over the radiator. It's a 1M front bumper, but it's all quick release. So it sucks taking BMW bumpers off. And if you're at the track or you need to get on the trailer or you have to fix something, the bumper comes off in a minute. Front Whoa, center. so if you park it on the street, somebody could just take your bumper? Uh, I mean, there's still like, there's still four screws here. But yeah, technically. Okay. That's why I don't park it on the street. <laughs> that reason alone. That's it. Because I wake up and the bumper's just gone. Okay, uh, it looks great. And this is functional, huh? Yeah, that's functional and it's mounted to the chassis. So, you know, the whole car. Oh, wow. It's on there. Um, and it's 
GTA like rules basically, so it's four or five inches off the front bumper. Street class rules. Yeah. So and you just really need downforce on this car. Like they they love to understeer, and that rear wing does a lot too. So big splitter, uh, wide 1M front fenders. Wait. So these are actually from BMW. Yeah. Every so everything except the hood and the trunk is from BMW, and I literally went online, ordered the parts from Germany from BMW. Uh, front bumper, front fenders, side skirts, rear bumper, and then the rear quarters actually showed up on a pallet. It's oh, a full wow. rear quarter. So Wait, so it, that... From that... here to here is, comes on a pallet. It's like the skin of the car. Huh, I'm surprised it doesn't go even more than that. Yeah. You actually had to like weld it in here? Yeah, or? you basically... And I mean, same as a body shop would do if you got in the rear end, you know, someone hit you in the rear quarter. They'll like cut it here and... Yeah, seamlessly like weld it on and fit it. And there's a whole like BMW method to how they do it. But when we did that, I mean, this was a crazy project. And I took it to my buddy Ivan uh, at Strasport, who Vinny's had some cars painted there too. And shout out to Strasport, he's painting all the, of our cars. He's the raddest dude. And I told him my idea, and he's like, just bring it by on Monday. Also um, a super enabler because he's the nicest guy. So nicest. he's just like, doing a roof? That's not that hard. I mean, about <laughs> that. Right. So basically, I'm like, yeah, you know, we could just take this part of the, the rear quarter and put it on. He's like, we should just do it right. So let's take the rear glass out. Let's cut it here. And next thing you know, everything's off. And I'm like, the glass is out already. I hated that this car had a sunroof and a steel roof. So I just started going at it and drilling out. Wait, so <laughs> this, out this is not stock either. Not this stock, is, yeah. this is the 1M one? Or? No, so the 1M actually comes with a steel roof, but no sunroof as an option. Um, the 135i though in the US did not. Every 135i came with a sunroof. So I was like, all right, well, we're here already. So I hit up IND distribution. I got an RKP full carbon roof. We pulled the stock roof off, sunroof assembly, and then I got a 1M headliner from Germany also. Because I hated the idea of like no headliner. I also hated, you can't have a sunroof headliner in a car with no sunroof. Yeah. So. And you lose a lot of weight up top. So people yeah. don't realize it's like no sunroof, carbon roof is actually really good because you're removing weight from like your highest leverage point. Yeah. So it changes super, everything. Yeah. Uh, so this, because this is actually properly done. Like yep. some of the over fenders I've seen. <laughs> The Dude, stock where, fender is wait, underneath where, this. Where, where, where are all the rivets? Yeah. <laughs> where are the rivets? What happened to them? We couldn't do it. And there's there's like a bunch of options out there where people make these race cars and like so cheap and it just like doesn't follow any body lines. It's just plastic. I'm like, I can't do that. I want it to look OEM. So so we ended up doing kind of a 1M clone with a few uh, details that are specific to this car. And my favorite is honestly the exhaust. Mm, tell me about the exhaust. So... I love like rally style turn down tips. I just wanted something that kind of shot flames to the ground and echoed. Oh wow. Uh, but I also hated that the stock 1M rear valence uh, is meant for a quad exhaust. And I'm like, we don't need a quad exhaust on a single turbo six cylinder, it's just stupid. So I want it to be true single. So I had Ivan again fill in the right side exhaust hole. Oh, so wow. it's like a true single valence. And, that was never, never an option for the one in. Right, this is like the Laguna Seca turn down kind yeah. of thing, huh? Except so loud. Yeah. Love it's this. already melting. This is like so GT3. It just looks so Yeah, cool. I mean, this, this bumper, bumper comes with, uh, it comes with holes, but they're filled with like plastic. So I took those out and now it's functional. So. Hmm. APR wing, of course. Yeah, APR sick. wing. And you know what's funny? Like a lot of people go nuts and they do full roof height. And I hit up APR and they're like, this is meant for this car. And I've been running it. I haven't adjusted it once. And the car is so fast. It has it's so, so solid. So tell me about the wheel, tire, and brake combo over here. Yeah, so brakes, it's a StopTech trophy kit, front and rear. Um, I run StopTech track pads or SR33s with cash flow fluid and it never boils and the car is insane to stop. Uh, tires, I've always loved the challenge of running a street tire, so 200 tread wear. Uh, so these are Nexon Sur 4Gs and they're 275 wide, which is like really not a lot of tire for a car that makes 530 wheel. So you have drift tires on here. Basically. <laughs> so, and they're awesome. They hook up on the track and I, I'm pretty sure uh, no one's gone faster on these tires at Button Willow. Really? Yeah. So what's oh, your time? Well, Whoa! Really? Whoa! Did you drop that in Call there mid, mid video? Wow. Fastest guy on Sur 4Gs. I want to do the Sur 4G in, challenge, man. Wow. Guy at Button on a Sur 4G in a white BMW on a Saturday when it's 94 <laughs> degrees at Button Willow. Well, tell me your time. What's your time? Uh, 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 it's CCW 13, right? No, no CW. CW or CW. CW 13. Yeah, cool. uh, uh, 152.6. Fast. Huh. 
152. Yeah. Oh my God. That was like, I was like, I couldn't calculate that because my fastest time in my Z is very, <laughs> very slow. Is a 209. Okay. Well, so we were always like sub two, sub two, sub two is fast. Then this dude put this big old turbo on his car and like the first day out was like eight seconds faster. We're yeah. like, holy shit. It makes a lot of power. Oh my and God. And that paired with like the crazy suspension and everything else. I mean, this is the total package. Is, Wait, so did you win your class for that event? Uh, that was just a regular track day. So no, we were just you can't testing. win. You can't be Jackie Ding. Can't, Jackie can't Ding's too fast. Ha, and he got <laughs> in a bit, another BMW, I mean Toyota. Yeah. He just yeah. won this past Jackie, weekend. Jackie yeah, Ding like, is like, he's crazy. He's nuts, man. He's, he's so nuts. fast. He's, he's such nuts. a good driver and a lot of like, time. I, I could have made this car lighter and like better on the track, but I was, I tried to be like reserved. So I kept a lot of the interior. I did a rear seat delete, which adds weight. Like you could get this car down to 2,900 pounds if I was more serious about only wanting to do track. But well, this is such a sick yeah. street track interior. Look at the interior on this thing. It's so dope. Let's first do engine bay. Anyway, <sighs> wheels, uh, they're Pixie Profile, Profile 10s. They're 18 by 10 all around, uh, front and rear. Oh, well, what? Square? Yeah. That's crazy. 18 by 10, and that has a spacer too. There's like more room up there. Oh my God. Actually, we both have the exact same wheels because we wanted to do like a, a race team thing, but then your boy got real washed up and sold his E46. Ah. That's it. Now they're just on my like sort of daily. Now, but now you're <laughs> a Porsche guy, right? Yeah, now I'm a Porsche guy, so, you know. No, I'm not an anything guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just shit. like everything. You know how it is. Yeah, you just like everything. everything. Oh, All right, so the light is actually working really well for how ugly this engine so is. So yeah, tell me a little bit about what's going on over here. Um, all right, so, well actually the most important part I think of why this car got so much faster, even though it had a bigger turbo, is MCS two-way remote reservoir coilover setup. It's like the most insane upgrade I've ever done. And I just had no idea like what race suspension felt like until I went back to Button Willow and hit the curbs and the S's at like full speed, 120 miles an hour, and you just don't even move. Like the grip and compliancy is like the most, it's just a crazy thing. It's really hard to explain, but hold they're on, insane. Hold on. Can you tell me? You can see. Wow, that that's there. such a flex. Yeah. That's, that's such a, a flex. I did it for a reason. So everyone could see your reservoir through well, your hood. Also, the kidney grills are not effective anymore because these are meant for the intake for the twin turbo setup. But since I don't have that turbo setup anymore, now the reservoirs are actually cooled by the kidneys and these ducts. Damn. Wow. That's some thought. So Whoa. I drilled them in there and I just hung them and they stay cold out all the time now. So then where does it get air from down here right then? Here. I mean, no, it, for you, like everything else. Everything else? Yeah, I mean, air definitely just gets forced into here. I have a, I built a custom twin oil cooler setup because these cars run really hot. So I bought two cores and basically there's no thermostat. It just flows out of here into one core that I stuffed in that hole. And then it goes over the intercooler into the other cooler right there and then back into the engine. So there's a lot of coolers. The it, rice in me loves all the coolers. Look, yeah. you got your front mount intercooler, which is essential <laughs> for any rice car. And then you have two big old oil coolers. Whoa, like I didn't even notice ever. that. Yeah. So I thought this was a grill, yeah. actually. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I yeah. wanted it to look kind of like factory. You could miss it, but also blend it in and make yeah. it super functional. No, that looks good. And there I are like a few that. people that like made kits like that, but you know, they're really expensive and they weren't, I didn't see them like actually seeming beneficial uh, for really like pounding it on a track. So I just kind of built it myself with everything I researched and it works. Hmm. So I think it's like one of the only M54s that stays cool. Huh. Um, but yeah, engine wise, it's, it's a stock motor. So I never touched anything on the internals. Uh, it's just about making things better. So it's a CES Motorsport single turbo kit with a Garrett turbo. That's stuff way down there. They made like a crazy CNC log manifold. This is way too nerdy, but it's yeah. super cool. Uh, and it has crazy spool because of that. So it's really close to the motor and it's twin scroll. So, Wait, so, okay. Here, let me get on this side. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this is super nerdy, but this is autofocus. We're focusing on autos here. Yeah. Okay. We're nerd out, bro. Yeah, we're nerding out. Tell us about the thing. But, what but, turbo is it? So how much power are you making? I just so want to know that. It makes 530 at the wheels horsepower and then uh it makes 485 pound feet of torque yo the dyno graph on this thing looks like a z06 it's like boom, it's crazy boom. It's Wait, but the, is that on pump fuel or? uh that's on e30 so i mix a little bit of e85 with shitty california 91 um and it's just an upgraded low low pressure fuel pump but it's tough with this motor because it's direct injection so you kind of have to find a balance of like i wanted to keep things 
relatively simple. You could go and do port injection and add all this fuel and like another ECU and I don't want to deal with any of that. Like there's enough stuff to deal with. So I'm basically at the limit of what the stock fuel system lightly upgraded can handle. Um, and then the ethanol is there just to make things run a little cooler and make more power. On pump gas straight, it makes 480 wheel, but it's only at like 19, 20 PSI. So it's a 750 horsepower turbo. Like if we upgraded the fuel system, it would make 700 wheel really easily. I, and I also love the fact that this is, you're driving a manual transmission. Like I, yeah. I can't stress that enough. And I think people don't realize how hard it is to drive a manual fast on track. It, like, as a handful, I you mean. have to be so on point with your downshifts and your upshifts and all of that. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll put yourself into the wall if you miss a gear or whatever. I've had moments. I mean, the car's pretty tail happy with this much power. Um, but honestly, it's it's so dialed now and I'm, I'm so comfortable in it that driving it on the limit is like the coolest. It's the coolest car I've ever driven for sure. Hmm, awesome. Okay, let's check out the interior. Vinny, we're checking out the interior, okay? Nice, this is what All I right. wanted to get to. That's yeah. what I came here for. What do you like about this? Oh wait, oh these seats are nice. Oh dude, this seat, these seats have story. They have a history. So these were Will Rogie seats. Right? In his 911. In his 911. Yeah. Wow. He sold them to me for like a thousand bucks for two leather like Recaros, insane. Uh, so when I, I needed bigger seats for harnesses cause I'm too tall. And uh, so I sold these to Alex cause we had to keep the deal in the family. So these seats have like so many of so friend many, parts in them, so just through all of them. Including mine. Including yours. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's check out the, oh wow, this is really nice. Yeah, so I really, really wanted it to feel like, uh, like a factory kind of spec car or, you know, like a safety car. And there actually was a 1M spec car and there's uh, M3, you know, safety cars and pace cars. So I wanted it to feel like an option you could get from the factory, like a CSL or GTS. So yeah, I, I went really far to like with the details to make everything look kind of, you know, really, really premium. So it started with these seats, then it's the full slick top headliner. It was a BMW factory, like Alcantara wheel. And then I sent out the handbrake boot, shift boot, and all the dash trim to match the wheel. Mm. Tell me about the shifter. This looks sick. So this is from a company called AKG Motorsports. They're a US company. They build a really, really sick like DTM style short shifter. It's mounted to the chassis, so it has literally like zero slop. Um, and honestly, the ZF trans in this car is insane. So you can, you just bang shifts like all day uh, and it just takes it. It's the best. Uh, and then I have a spec stage three plus clutch that literally I just put in once and it has never caused a problem and it just puts the power down takes the abuse clutch kicks whatever you want it's the best that's a single plate though huh yeah so it's the car comes stock with a dual mass flywheel uh but it's a single plate clutch and then i swapped to their uh single mass flywheel which is like a billet steel awesome. piece oh cool okay then, tell uh, me about this uh half cage yeah here. so ed um might have heard of him like mobile weld specialist he custom made this roll bar for me I wanted like a one piece kind of factory looking roll bar. So it bolts in, but it is all one piece. And yeah, I wanted to powder coat it to match the car. Um, and again, like it was, it would have been really easy to just gut this thing and have no interior, but I had him fab up a full rear seat delete. So I didn't want to like hear the trunk. I didn't oh, want to see it Oh, this is so nice. So it's a two piece seat delete, still pretty light, um, but it's wrapped in the OEM black leather. So. Oh, wow. It looks so clean. I mean, yeah. that's kind of the thing, right? It's like, all right, so if you want that kind of like a GT3 look yeah. or GT car on the street look, what do you do with the back? You know, exactly. do you leave the rear seats in or? So, and you know? I was like, yeah, you can't have rear seats with a roll bar. That's like a big no-no. So I really just wanted to feel like that factory, you know, option. And then the M4 GTS, which we were able to get here, but not with this option. But in Europe, it came with a roll cage and it came with this like, suede rear seat delete with a fire extinguisher on it i'm like man i have to do something like that for this car so i just love like those little details hmm. i also like the fact that this doesn't have a nav nothing that yeah. really it's actually i actually it. i actually really prefer like the interior layout and like ergonomics of this car versus the e92 where everything feels like way more far apart but uh i just love like the whole setup in here hmm. okay. super simple well, I think it's time for us to go do some driving. Yeah, now. we should do it. That's definitely like the, the most fun part. Are you going to make him let you drive his car? Uh, is that the time of the video? Does he yeah, know that So, so th this is a thing, right? So uh, people call me out for not scumbagging. They're like, oh, it's been three videos, Larry. You haven't been scumbagging at all. 
we, we do subtle scumbags here on auto Focus, <laughs> you know we we do we do we do basically I just basically get in the seat and then they hand me the keys. Oh, nice. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Well, that's part of the video. All right, yeah. I'm in. Look at yeah. you. you did it. Success. You signed up for it. Yeah. Also, another thing is a lot of people, a lot of you guys love asking why or kind of calling me out for not not driving hard and like granny shifting and not double clutching and all like that you stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I like could I do should. that. Yeah. And then you can drive and, you know. No, but but the, not other people's car sucks. No, you that's break it, terrible. Like... No, I don't want to fix anyone else's car. Yeah. Also, I appreciate these so much for what they are. All the blood, sweat, and tears, all of everything that you put into this thing, money, time, effort, all of that, and it's your baby. I don't want to destroy it, but I also still do want to enjoy it and feel what I it's want like. I you to enjoy my baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know what to do, Alex. Tunnel runs, going down right now. Tunnel runs. <laughs> All the way. It's like ripping the air. Oh, it's so funny. Is, that, cry. is that the best explanation for that? It's, it's ripping just, the air. Yeah, it's just, it's so much oh noise. Oh my god. It's really loud in the tunnel. Holy and cow. And I think because the exhaust doesn't go straight out, it just comes out down. It's like that much louder. Let me try it. Let me try it. Okay. I gotta try this. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Don't worry, uh, I won't be like that. No, oh, don't say it. Yeah, super guy. <laughs> Tunnel runner. Do it. Glad you got to experience this. That was so sick. He's he's turning into a BMW Are guy you really slowly. Serious? I just don't even. I just can't even right now. Have you? What have you experienced that? Why that does felt? it sound like that? Because there's no muffler. It's just a big turbo, a six cylinder that revs to the moon. It's it's, awesome. it's like ripping the air. Yeah. It's also a lot of boost, and it's oh like oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, it's just all, all the good things. He likes it. I like it. It's it's like it's like I guess it's like the modern 2J then, right? Everyone I mean, says that. Yeah, I mean people say that B58 is the The B58 2J. is better than this because they learn from this. Right. So, right. you right. know, this was like the start of like six cylinder BMW turbo stuff and during this generation. Oh, and just... then they made it better and they tried with the M55, then the Oh my god, Vinny. Then... Dude, this thing is insane in the tunnel. Yeah, let him rip it, it sounds so good. He did a tunnel Dude, run. It was like this. It was like, yeah! <laughs> Vinny in Bernie's car. What gear are you in? like a whip. I was saying whipping air, it sounds like a whip. Yeah, it's just yeah. Oh, it's, sick. It, it's like a crack of a whip. You know what though? So like, you know new cars, like the faster they get, the like, it still doesn't feel like raw and visceral. I think this is like a perfect blend. Cause like, it feels as fast as my 240, but not as shitty. 
but it's not like too <laughs> refined to where it's like boring. Right. This is so good. It's so hard it went out of focus. <laughs> I thought you leave those, those in auto. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I think I don't know. I don't I don't think that's a I don't think there's a better way to wrap this. I think that's a wrap, man. This is great. I, I love this car. Because you said he's selling it, right? Maybe he wants to trade for another stock M3 to go oh. into stock M3. So he could have two stock M3s for yeah. whatever reason. I don't know why. Yeah. All right, Vinny. This turned into a crazy long video. This is like the BMW saga right here. Uh, yeah. So this car is a lot slower, but I would say it sounds better. <laughs> okay, let's I see. I mean, 9,000 RPM of V8 goodness. Okay. like IMSA car. No, it seriously sounds exactly like the M3 GTR that Tommy Milner, a really good buddy of mine, I, it sounds like I was at Sebring, right? Yeah, there. like it so, sounds like, it it's sounds so like, crazy because it's like you're not, it's not like that type of fast where you're like, oh my god, but it's like, it's just fun and it, it sounds so sick. Oh my god, it, that, that sounds like the car at Sebring, seriously. It's, it sounds like, so good. I, I love, love, love my E46 M3. And I even think like, I like the S54 and it sounds kind of unique and raspy, but like, no comparison. <laughs> I can't believe it. Get, just get some tack on there, you know? Oh. Let's get some. That's how you make U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> I just love doing these kind of videos. I love that you um, kind of, you degraded yourself. So you went from main channel to autofocus. Oh, stop it. So like, it's good to see you on this channel. You yeah, autofocus is fun. <laughs> I, I love watching autofocus videos, man. Cause I'm just a car nerd. I just like watching about cars. So it's great. I love that.